For one, today is Thursday, what is it, November 7th, wow, 2019, it's the weekend charts. All right, I want to thank everybody for coming, as usual, I appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule, and if you're watching on YouTube, thank you. Two, there's a disclaimer screen, as you know, you can lose money trading, or as often summing up, all predictions about the future, and a lot of stuff can happen between now and then. So what are we going to talk about? Well, I think the main focus this week is going to be on the market itself. We'll take a look at a few things there, including a system update. Obviously, your questions on trading. We don't have a lot to cover this week, so you can ask them at any time you want. And then your favorite stock picks. If you don't mind, just in case we get a few questions, hold off until we get to the charts. And that's for your benefit to make sure that I get to your stock picks. And then also ask about one at a time. And that's also for your benefit. So what are we talking about? Well, charts at a chart show, what a concept. I have a lot of things that I really want to get into from a psychological standpoint and a little bit on a neurologist standpoint too, but there's just not enough time to get it all pulled together. So over the next coming weeks, I have a lot of things that I think are fantastic, at least they've been working out really great for me that I want to cover. But today I want to just focus on the overall market. I do want to talk a little bit about trading open and gap reversals. And this is something that we talk a lot about in the Facebook group because with the trend trading stuff, there's not something to do every day. And there's one set up for today and then one triggered yesterday and there's not much to do with it. And we'll take a look at that one in just a few minutes. But if you think about it, when you're trading the swing to intermediate term, trend following moron stuff or whatever you want to call it, you look for a setup, you find a setup, you enter an, an order for that setup, and it takes you, let's say it takes you 20 minutes to find a trade, and I've done quite a few presentations on this, and it takes you less than a minute to place that order after the market opens, and then once it triggers, you put a stop order in, and in some cases, you put an initial profit target in, depending on the stock. If it's a thinner stock or an IPO or something, you might want to go ahead and have that limit order in place, but that only takes a minute. And then the rest of the time, there's not a whole lot to do, but wait and wait and wait and wait and wait. Be patient waiting for setups and be patient once you're in a setup, but the actual trading process doesn't take a whole lot of time. Now, because we have a lot of time on our hands, well, in my case, I just keep myself stupid busy. I have so much to do, I don't think I'll ever get it all done, but that's okay. But we do have to keep ourselves busy. And since we're here anyway, or a lot of us have a little time to look at the markets, we've got to be careful not to get sucked in, but we can occasionally see these opportunities present themselves. And if I wait and wait and wait and wait and wait, and that, that this goes for a trade in general, but especially on an opening gap reversal trade, if I wait and wait and wait and wait and wait and use a fairly liberal entry as opposed to trying to jump in on the first little tiny bit of reversal, I'll actually do pretty good. Now, I don't want to say I'm always right when I wait and wait and wait, but it seems like when I do a little post-mortem type of analysis, the ones that I do really well are were just absolutely blatant. They were so obvious and so obvious that it would be impossible not to take the trade. It's almost like a, a forced type of trade. As I often say, it's kind of the Jimmy Rogers walk over to the corner and pick up the money. I just wait until there's money lying in the corner and all I do is walk over there and pick it up. In the meantime, I do nothing. Well, the more and more I look at my trades, the more and more I realize if I wait and wait and wait on these things, I'll do quite well. Now, eventually the impatience sometimes will get to me. I, I was just thinking today, I've got a couple of orders in, looks like they're not gonna trigger. And I'm like, geez, when's the next opportunity gonna come along? Anyway, I'll get into that in a little more detail. The point I'm trying to get to, believe it or not, I have one with the opening gap reversals is we're here anyway, we're doing the analysis for our, our trend trades, but they don't really take that much time. So we have a little extra time on our hands. We've gotta be careful not to get sucked in the screen, but we can occasionally pick up a few bucks trading these opening gap reversal type of trades. And I'll talk about those in detail in just a few minutes. And I also want to talk about the different types of the opening gap reversals, or as one of you guys named them a while back, ogres. 
and then some thoughts in general on some things and some random thoughts. There's a disclaimer screen. As you know, you can lose money trading. Or as I often sum it up, all predictions are about the future. A lot of stuff could happen between now and then. Okay, I thought it'd be a good idea to update the TFM 10% system in it. And this market's kind of a kind of been a crazy one for quite a while. We'll look at the charts here in just one second. But it's kind of interesting that it's actually done okay. If you look at the intermediate term, it looks like it's just chopped around forever. And for the most part, it has. But the longer term and the longer term charts actually look okay. Now, the TFM system, the rules are as long as you're less than 10% away from the 50 week closing high, L O S C H I G A, close high, and you are greater than the 50 week, the low, I should say, is greater than the 50 week moving average. And then this is actually two lows. So two lows greater than moving average. So if you have one, Two lows greater than moving average, and you're within the within 10% of the 50-week closing high. Then you would go long. You're going to exit when you close below that moving average, okay, and or greater than 10% away from the 50-week closing high. Now I beat the system to death, and, and what amazes me is that something so simple can actually work and work quite well. My original intent with this was not to necessarily beat the pants off of buy and hold. And you can look down here, it's like, well, Dave, it really doesn't beat buy and hold by that much. And you're right. But my original intention wasn't necessarily kick buy and hold butt, but more importantly, to avoid these 50% haircuts or 40 something percent haircuts that happened every now and then. And if you're looking at the last 20 years of the market, it seems like they happen fairly often. And people seem to have very short memories and forget about how bad the market could do. And they just talk about buy and hold, in for long haul and all that. As you know, not a big fan of buy and hold, although it did work fairly well going back to 19, 1988 when I started all this, testing that is. I would love to go way back in time, just not enough time to do it. But I figured if we started way back when some big bull trends occurred and just take that forward and see what happens, especially since we have a couple of bear markets in between, I thought it'd be interesting to see what we can come up with. And then the part that I wanted to emphasize is again, avoiding these diaper change moments. And as I've said, ad nauseum, even though it got shaken out, back in November of 2018, you could argue that's a whipsaw, but it did drop another 11% after it got you out of the market. And I think that's that's nothing to sneeze at. If you had a million dollars, say, for retirement, and you lost $110,000 over a month or so, I think that would probably wake you up. The other thing that kind of unintentionally happened was I was pretty bearish back in March and one of you, I think it was one of you girls pointed out in the Facebook group that we had a buy signal. I'm like, no, 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 you silly little bullish fool. There's no way there could be a buy signal because blah, 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 blah. And I gave out the rules. And then when I looked at the chart after they insisted that it was a buy signal, I'm like, wow, it is a buy signal. We had the Landry light and we were within 10% of the closing high. So it was a buy way back then. And it really didn't do that well on that signal up until now though. One thing I did look at, which was kind of surprising, if you look at the entry of that would be 28.03. The worst drawdown so far was 2.11% from where you entered. In other words, you were underwater at worst, 2.11%. Now there were some big drawdowns in between, but they didn't go below 2803. And by big, less than 10%. So, but big enough to take notice. Anyway, I thought that's pretty cool. And then the other thing that I've talked about quite a bit is that it's only 10 trades in 30 years, which isn't that active. And you would have been out of the market for 6.31 years. 
or 20% of the time. And that 20% would, this is the 20% right here. So all of these diaper change moments, obviously that's kind of a, probably you could say that's a web saw, that's a web saw, but 10% and even 8% drawdowns in between or diaper change more accurately, meaning that let's say you're in the system and then you exit here well, from here down to wherever it goes, and that drawdown is your diaper change. And remember, I don't know, everybody here knows this today, but just in case somebody's new watching on YouTube, if you lose 50% of your money, you have to make back 100% of, you have to have a 100% return just to get back to break even. And, it, and when you lose more than 50%, it begins to grow really ge geometrically. Anyway, just a simple little system, not something I follow mechanically, although I have been kind of noodling with the idea, what if I did follow it mechanically and just a separate account, just for SGs. so 10 years from now, hopefully I'm still around, I could say, hey, remember that stupid little system? Well, it stopped working or it did incredible over this period of time. And I see no reason why it would stop working because it's so simple and it's certainly nothing that's curve fit. Anyway, so that's the little, TFM 10% system. And this morning I was looking at the 50 week moving average relative to the S&P cash. And you can see we had a little daylight way back there in February. And then I think that's when the, we got the signal back. See the February and March way back then. And then we've had some daylight. And then finally, when you go back all the way back to June on the 50 week chart, We've had, and I've got to get used to saying it, Landry Light is what I now call it, thanks to one of you guys. So we've had Landry Light for quite a while. So longer term, the market is okay. Obviously, short to intermediate term, when you have a lot of this sideways, wide and loose trading, it has been questionable. Now, we're very active traders. So as you know, during this slide and all this sideways action, we've had quite a few shorts that set up and that we've taken quite a few of them. And some of you guys in the Facebook group have taken even more of them and they've done quite well in spite of the overall market actually going on to bang out new highs. So you have to play the hand it's dealt. But the beauty of having something mechanical like this is even when you're a little on the bearish side, seeing shorts shorting, making money shorting, you know that longer term, the market is still okay. And it kind of forces you to maybe not be as bearish or maybe that could get too crazy bearish. Maybe pull your claws in a little here and there and make sure you're taking those partial profits. As you know, big fan of the semiconductors and they had Landry Light back in February and then quite a bit in March. It took a while to get started, but finally back in June, like the S&P 500, we've had Landry Light ever since. And this is a weekly chart again. And now we're up here at all time highs. A lot of people like to look at the transports, which we'll look at when we get to the live charts. And their theory is Dow theory that the transport should confirm what you're seeing in the major averages. And I don't disagree with that. I just prefer to look at something like the semis. I think the semis are a little bit more important. As some, somebody pointed out, it's a more like an information highway now. But, you know, it's kind of weird. Everything sort of people like, well, you know, transport, that's, that's, uh, that's old school. But it still involves the economy. And how many packages do you get to your house every day? It's funny, my daughter, my daughter saw a bumper sticker. Tired of all these 18 wheelers? Stop buying shit. <laughs> anyway, it's funny. All right, let's shift gears and talk about opening gap reversals with the trend versus burning dogs. And again, ogres on our bread and butter, but you can make a little money here and there. And this is something that I've covered in a lot of detail in the Facebook group and also, especially in the Q&A. And some of today's presentation comes from yesterday's Q&A. And you do want to trade at a much smaller size. I would say a half a percent of your account is plenty to trade on an opening gap reversal because it adds up really quick if you're not very, very, very careful and super patient in waiting on these. Now, an opening gap reversal with the trend is ideally some sort of setup. So you want to look for A, a very strong trend and then be some sort of setup within that trend. So it might look something like 
like this. For the uptrends, let's say you've got an up bar or, or up a series of up bars, I should say. And then the stock begins to pull back and then you have like a gap down here and the major trend is still in place and you're hoping, I know I just said hope, but hoping that that will reverse in the direction of the trend. A burning dog is when you have a really long trend and you might have a gap way up here and you know it's going to be hard for that to sustain itself at least intraday you know you might have a reversal back down now burning dogs comes from linda rasky's book trading sardines i would recommend you read the book and i was just skimming over this morning this morning the uh, trader was gingas who worked in linda's office for a while and he would fade every s p gap and he felt his theory he called them burning dogs and his theory was that it was an uncomfortable trade for people to take. People don't want to pet the burning dog. So he wanted to be on the opposite side of that uncomfortable trade. Anyway, I just kind of, it's kind of a cool name. So it's sort of stuck as far as fighting the trend with these opening gap reversals. Now, keep in mind that it is unnatural for me as a trend player to play these, but every now and then I think they're worth a shot. But I know I'm fighting the trend. So I'm very prudent in my money management and I'm very careful and pick my spots very careful on these. So let's look at trading with the trend. So this is one we were talking about recently in the Facebook group. And you had a really nice downtrend and you also had a pullback. So if I was just seeing this, in fact, it was on my Landry list, I believe for that day. Don't quote me on that, but if it wasn't, it should have been. And then we had this really nice opening gap higher. And not all the time, but notice that it found its high fairly quickly. This is a daily bar chart. And then began to implode. So in a case like this, you're looking to short the market intraday and hopefully capture that trend day back in the direction of the trend. Here's one of my all-time favorite examples. And this was last... Geez, it was just in May. I thought it was like a year ago. It was only a few months ago, back in May. You had Cree, which was in an accelerating uptrend. And also, notice that the move higher is something I'm just kind of noticing now. And this is the beauty of teaching. I learn a lot in the process. But I'm just learning, I'm just noticing that it was also in a very, very, very persistent uptrend. And that means that it tends to go up day after day after day after day. And as I've said quite a bit, Mathematically, it's equivalent to linear regression. If you wanted to mess around with some indicators, just for research purposes, plot a linear regression line, and you'll see that those lines are going to look a lot like the persistency line that I draw through the bar. So when you draw the trend lines, again, when you look for persistency, draw them through the bars and see how many you can intersect at one time so anyway getting back to this chart nice accelerating and persistent uptrend so this thing looked fantastic and the big blue arrow of course pointing higher we had a big gap lower and then by the end of the day it reversed like almost 10 points higher so this is the kind of move that's occasionally possible it takes a lot of discipline discipline easy for me to say takes a lot of money management. You have to be willing to follow the old hedge fund adage, he who fights and runs away lives a fight another day. I was talking with one of you guys recently who has had bouts of overtrading over the years, and we were discussing the fact that it can be a slippery slope. And I feel like I may have put too much emphasis on the opening gap reversals lately, but it's just something that requires I think a lot of knowledge, a lot of experience, a lot of discipline, again, a lot of money management. You really need to try to be as hands off as possible so you don't get sucked in like a moth to the fire and get yourself in a lot of trouble. And that's why I spend so much time on them, even though it's not the whole bread and butter of the methodology. So a burning dog would be when you're looking to trade more on the fringe, looking at bonds going back to August, late August, they made all-time highs on a big gap higher. 
and then came right back in. And then in more recent times, today, we're making multi-month lows, okay? Lowest level since August. And it's a sizable gap down. Now, I am just looking to play a bounce from that oversold condition, get a little day trade out, and then get out of the way. The good news is I saw one a couple days ago, as you can see in this chart, I put an order to buy it, it never triggered. This morning I came in, same sort of action. I have an order to buy and so far it has a triggered, no trigger, no trade. Now, a couple of things with the burning dogs because you're a trend fighter. I would be careful in individual issues. I've seen a few of you guys trade them in the Facebook group, I'm kind of like Bandcamp with the Facebook group. Huh? I just love you guys so much and girls. I've really been enjoying that. I never dreamed that it would become what it has become. And I think it's, I think we're just scratching the surface here. I thought I'd have to come in and talk all day and nobody would chime in. And it's been just the opposite. I have to, I have to try to catch up with the conversations you guys have been talking so much. So it's great. But I would be very careful in those individual issues. If you're trading an ETF, I think the chances of a reversal are a lot better than an individual issue. You don't know who's on the hook in an individual issue and what can happen, but it kind of balances out a little bit in an ETF. And you're more likely to catch that reversion to the mean move. Did I just say reversion to the mean? Yeah, it is sort of a reversion to the mean move, but it's an intraday type of thing. Now, if you are going to trade individual issues, what you might want to do is consider some additional rules. And I often say that you can't wait a set time amount because you stand the risk of missing a really good trade. But in those individual issues, I think it would probably be okay to come up with a rule like let's wait until at least the first 10 minutes of trading have occurred to establish that range because you're more likely to get a fake out in something like an individual issue than something like a TTS. So let me get, let me just draw that in real quick, be easier to just kind of show you. So let's say we're looking at a five minute chart and this is yesterday's trading up here. We come in today and it opens down here. A lot of times in the individual issues, they'll come up and rally a little bit and then they'll die out, okay? So this will be like your first five minute bar and this is your second five minute bar. So maybe one thing to do would be, let me redraw these. Let's say here's your first five minute bar goes kind of up and then your second five minute bar comes up a little bit but then implodes. Then maybe look to use a liberal entry above that second five minute bar if you're gonna trade like this. As a general statement, I would say avoid trading burning dogs and individual issues i think you're more likely to get burnt than in an etf and if you are going to do it it requires the utmost discipline and that goes for etfs too but especially individual stocks you must be willing to fight and run away you can't become a deer in the headlights especially an individual issue i try to resist the temptation and every now and then i do get sucked in and I was recently burned, <laughs> but I still look at ETFs with some caveats, just like the bonds today. I think they're due for a reversal. We got a nice gap lower. I think stocks, we had a nice gap higher. I think they're due to come in a little bit. So I think it's worth a shot. All right, one thing I've been thinking about doing more and more of since I started the stockcharts.com show or since they asked me to start a stockcharts.com show, stockcharts.com TV, is talk about the methodology in action. So in yesterday's show, I was talking about the TKO, and this is PLMR, which triggered today. I am long, full disclosure, based on my trading service. By the way, I was thinking this morning, it's like trading is so easy for me not so easy. I guess that's an exaggeration. Trading is much easier for me for the stocks that I recommend on service versus the stocks that I pick on my own. 
because I know I have to follow along with the stocks on the service just so I know if they're really working, just so I could say in good conscience, we took profits here and I have those profits in my account. And on the flip side, not that I want to lose, but if I if we do lose on a trade, I feel that pain. <laughs> Anyway, it, it's easier to follow it because the plan is there and I have to do what I say I have to do. Anyway, that's just one thing I was thinking about this morning. So here were the parameters. It's the second one at the bottom. 44.80, 36.70, 52.90 would be your entry, protective stop, and initial profit target respectively. And the pattern is a TKO with a risk of eight points. Now that sounds a little extreme, but that's what it calls for. This thing bounces around quite a bit. It's dropped eight points since it's high in less than a week or so, or a little bit more than a week, I should say. So that's what it calls for. And those are the parameters. By the way, if you are in the, if you are a gold member or a service member, which automatically makes you a gold member, at least currently, you go to members resources on the dashboard and you can download this spreadsheet and put your own trades into it. So here's the parameters. That was our entry, our stops way down here. It seems kind of extreme when you look at the chart, really not that much because they could easily take out that low and then take off and go on to new highs. And that's what it looks like on the chart. Big blue arrow higher, also some acceleration and trend higher. And so far, so good, I suppose. So what I would encourage you to do, and this is 100% free, and you can learn a lot by doing this. I used to call, I used to put out a delayed service, but it became a bit of a hassle. So now I just post them on my website, and I'll give you the link to that too. But you can go to the service page from the members area, even if you're just a free member, and access these archives. And it's a good exercise if I say so myself. When I had the delayed service out there for free, I called it Foresight and Hindsight. And the reason I came up with that silly name was because you could go in and see what I saw. And it's not me saying, oh, yeah, I saw this in 100% in, in hindsight. And you could also see warts and all how things work as opposed to these scumbags that occasionally hit a big winning trade. And then they post it out. They send them the zillion emails out to everyone bragging. By the way, that's one thing I've been thinking about lately. There's just so much noise in a system. And because, probably because now I have a show with stock charts and I'm subscribed to their YouTube channel. And because I have my own channel on trading, I guess because of all these things, YouTube is recommending all these guru videos to me and and i guess because i do occasionally click on one <laughs> just so i can roll my eyes they're they're suggesting more and more to me now i don't know if this is a lot of times you don't know if that's a microcosm what's out there but i think it is a microcosm of what's out there or just just youtube's tar youtube is targeting you with certain videos but anyway i think it's safe to say that there's a lot of noise in the system so I would be careful. These guys will come and go. Let's just see who is here five years from now, 10 years from now, and not get too caught up in that. But anyway, service archives, if you are on the trading service and you go to the service page, this is all under the members area of the website. If you click members on the home page, you can get here. At the bottom, you'll see recent services. And after we reach, if I go back a week or so and we don't have any stocks that have it triggered, I'll go ahead and move those to the archives page, which I still haven't shortened this URL, but this is it right here, this big old long URL up there. And you can go back, I don't know how many years I have, I have plenty there. There's a few gaps, as I've said before. When I went to video, the videos became huge and I've got to find those on some old hard drives around here. Anyway, become a member of DaveLandry.com. You can become a free member for free, get to know me for free. But then I think you'll want to stick around, and it's only 47 bucks a month. 
you don't have 47 bucks a month, you shouldn't be trading. I'm half kidding. <laughs> I do promise that I'll make it worth your while. And the Facebook group has paid for itself. I keep saying that, but Dave, you're not paying. Well, I'm paying $50,000 a year to keep a website up and running at least. It's probably even more than that. But anyway, very proud of my members area. And over the years, I've worked with a lot of people on a one-on-one -on -one basis. And I'm thinking either I'm a poor teacher or they're they are uh, not too good of a student. And then I'll realize that they're missing an important piece. I'll say something about money management. And they're like, well, I didn't know that. And it's like, well, really? But now, and I'm not altruistic, obviously I'm charging for this, but now we can go in and look at their progress. And if they're asking a lot of money management questions, I'll cover them in the Q and A so everybody can participate. But then I'll also give them a little nudge and say, okay, well, why don't you finish the money management course? And that should fill in the missing pieces. And if there are still any missing pieces, and there always will be, obviously, then we'll fill it in. We'll finish them up in the Q&A. All right, enough of that. Let's hop into the live charts. And if you want to start asking about individual issues, please feel free to do so now. We'll take a quick look at some of the sector action and then we'll we'll look at your stocks by the way i moved next week's show up an hour to noon eastern 11 o'clock my time which is central noon eastern and i did that it just seems like i'm always rushed to get the show on because the market opens hour and a half before the show and by the time i get all my stuff done i feel like i'm scrambling a little bit so i went ahead and moved it up the stock chart show starts at noon eastern also and that, I think, has got me thinking about it, even when I'm not 100% pre prepared, or if I'm not 100% prepared, I have some time to catch up an extra hour, obviously. All right. Yeah, that's a good pick, Chris. I like that one. It's on a landry list, but I'll go ahead and cover it. Okay, S&P 500, not a bad day so far. Let's take a look at the spiders. So... This is, would be a burning dog. I, I really hate fighting the trend, but sometimes you can get a really nice opening gap reversal when this occurs. I'm actually looking at SPXS, and this is what happened there. You got a gap down to brand new lows, or some pretty serious lows, I should say. By the way, do not hold these inverted chairs overnight because they will split you to death. It seems like, oh, wow, they're cheap. Let's go ahead and buy in. But you got to resist that temptation. So I forget exactly where my order is. I can walk over and see. Hang on. So I have an order in pretty high. I didn't realize it was that high. I have an order in 1535, looking to play a possible major reversal. A more aggressive entry would be possibly above this morning's high which occurred in the first 10 minutes of trading, maybe a little closer to 15.26. But I think I put that in before it made this big dip here, just to not get triggered in a noise alone. And again, not your bread and butter, but you can pick up a little bit of money every now and then on these burning dog type of trades. Again, as a trend trade, I prefer to trade with the trend. Let's get back to the cash S&P real quick. So far, the breakout remains intact. My big concern remains, and if we can hold today's gains, it's gonna look a lot better. But one of my big concerns remains the fact that we've had this run from the October lows, and it hasn't been straight up, but it's been a pretty good run. And let me just get a rough percentage on that. So it's 7% run in about a month. That's a pretty big run, and that's gonna be hard to sustain. So Obviously, we'll have some corrections along the way, but these recoveries at high levels always make me a little nervous about the overall market. But so far, so good. If you rewind about a week, we were just barely breaking out, and one or two down days would put you back into the soup. In other words, this intermediate term, wide range, wide range, range, you tried to say, wide range, range. Oh, that is what I'm trying to say. A wide and loose range, maybe. NASDAQ composite, same sort of action going on there too. Now beginning to clear those recent peaks here quite a bit. It did look toppy for quite a while, but that didn't materialize, obviously, so far at least. So, so far, so good there. 
Russell 2000 remains kind of the, I don't know if you would call it the fly in the ointment. It certainly improved quite a bit. Longer term, maybe a weekly chart might give us a bigger, better picture. You can see we haven't taken out this retrace high just yet. I'd feel a heck of a lot better once that did occur. Energies are kind of all over the place. Take a look at some of these sectors. They're having a good day today, but they're kind of wide and loose and all over the place. So I don't see anything to do there. Gold, the stocks, I have been constructive on because they took off, pulled back, and now they're beginning to meander around. But let's take a look at a weekly chart. When you look at the weekly, and, and keep in mind that something like gold that could be a little choppy, you have to be a little bit more lenient when you're doing your analysis. But one thing I'm noticing is that, well, it was working its way higher, then it accelerated higher, and then now it's pulled back. But today's kind of an ugly day. Want to make sure that gold holds these recent lows in here. And if it doesn't, then I would begin to get a little bit concerned. But I have stops in place on stocks that I'm long. Now, one thing that's probably helping out gold a little bit today, or helping gold go lower, I should say, is the fact that the dollar is improving. Gold is a dollar denominated commodity. What does that mean? Well, it means that if the dollar is cheaper, then it's gonna take a lot more of them to buy gold. So the price of gold will rise, all things constant as a general statement. In case of rash, discontinue use if you Smoke after sex, you're doing it too fast, and all these other disclaimers. But as a general statement, there is a negative correlation between those two. And that's probably one of the reasons why gold is sliding a little bit today. But obviously, if the Twitter in chief tweets something, <laughs> or people get so mad, it's like, I think he's purposely aggravating you people. It's like, a, it's funny. Anyway, I try to avoid all that BS, but it is funny. Getting back to the dollar, yeah, dollar strong could be what's pushing gold lower. Let's take a look at gold to commodity real quick since we're on this kick. Gold to commodity getting hurt pretty bad today. I don't want to confuse the issue with facts. It just seems like the state of the world and all, gold should be doing better. Maybe that is something to be concerned about when the market's not acting as it should. Maybe it's trying to tell you something, but we'll have stops or we have stops in place with the gold stocks just in case. Some areas like insurance breaking out to new highs, as you can see, some areas like drugs have pulled back. Now, but Dave, I thought you like pullbacks. I do like pullbacks, but I don't like them as much when they're bumping up against all time highs like this and they're not breaking through the high before they pull back. That's more of a stalling type of action over the, Somewhat in the media term, you could argue they look pretty good and have just pulled back. But over the long, long term, so far, they're kind of bumping up against resistance. And that's a little bit of a concern there. Retail, which has been bumping up against a little resistance, breaking out nice today. So, so far, so good there. And then the semiconductors have been on a pretty good tear as of late. And that's fantastic. Again, big fan of the semis confirming the overall action or supporting the overall action in the market. So, so far, so good there. Let's take a look at software. Software had been looking a little bit dubious by kind of topping out in here. And if you've been following along the Landry List, Facebook group, et cetera, we'll be talking about some of these shares in here. Is Q2 software? Somebody talked about smoke them if you got them in Q2 this morning. Look at that, big reversal. Boy, that's why we play. Uh... See, this is why you use, we were looking at this one back here. This is why you take partial profits, and especially like a day like today, if it came down here and hit your profit target, because obviously that selling can exhaust itself. But anyway, we've had quite a few of these software stocks with PAGs, I believe, from the trading service was in here. And this is one, if you go and look at my stock chart show, I talked about the fact that it just kind of meandered here sideways and I'm sure a lot of people got whittled down or what's the 
got tired of dealing with this stock that was only profitable one or two days, probably bailed out right before that big move lower. But here's one that we're short. So we still have a few shorts that are working and knock on wood, they're working okay. It's part of the overall market. I don't know if that's a harbinger of anything or we just got lucky. And I'm willing to admit that sometimes you just get lucky, but I'm not super bullish just yet, but I'm certainly not ignoring the fact that we're making new highs. The market's improving. Our longer term systems are positive. So I'm definitely being very, very skeptical, if that's the right word, of any potential shorts that I'm seeing. And I haven't put on a new short in a while just because the overall market is going up, most sectors are going up, and in general things are improving. But also, as usual, one day at a time. Okay, Chris wants to talk about ZYME. Good pick, Chris. Uh, this is a Landry list. I do notice that you did pull it up, uh, point it out before it was in the Landry list in the Facebook group. I'd actually like a slightly bit more knockout here, but it looks pretty good. It might, one thing to be a little concerned about, Not this isn't as big a concern in something like biotech as a big cap stock. But it might be priced for perfection because it's at these high levels. It's been in a good trend for a while. Now, would I take this setup if it maybe had a little bit more knockout move? Yes. Okay. But I think it's definitely worth watching. You've got a nice persistent move higher. In longer term, you can see it's worked its way higher. What has it done in more recent times? Well, it's accelerated higher. So, Chris, good eye on that. And I didn't see it until I did my analysis yesterday. So you were obviously looking at the charts intraday, doing your homework, doing your homework early. But yeah, that looks pretty good. Again, I sort of like to see a little bit more of a knockout move, but it's it's a pretty good looking stock. And I think you could probably trade it as it is. And you can almost do it kind of textbook now that we've had a little bit of a lower open here and if it closes down here somewhere and by textbook i mean entry here and stop down there and again i prefer a little bit more knockout move but that looks pretty good so good eye on that one chris i'll give you a high five on that all right any more and a quiet bunch today i guess we've been covering them all in the group are oh, you welcome chris good job yeah i mean i've I can't say that I definitely would have saw it. I can't imagine that I would have missed it because it would have came up in my scans. It did come up in my scans. But yeah, it doesn't hurt to um, to bring them up to remind me just in case. All right, going once. Going twice. Obviously, I want to thank everybody for coming today. I appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to subscribe to the channel to get updates when I post videos. We're doing stock charts show every Wednesday and those posts shortly thereafter. The weekly charts, I like to kind of edit them out, uh, edit them before I post them. So that usually takes a day or so to post, but uh, you can always come here live. Looks like I'm gonna shift the show up to 12 Eastern to give me a little bit more time to put some stuff together. So look for the shows 12 Eastern on Thursdays. Also, if you want me to do these shows some other time, let me know, I'll try to fit it in my schedule. But I know a lot of people are busy saving lives, repairing transmissions, and doing other great things on uh, Thursdays at 11 or 12 o'clock, whatever the case may be. Anyway, if we don't talk to you now and then, everybody have a fantastic weekend. Thank you so much.